Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here for video number two concerning our new Unit 6-BC uh, with the subtopic of six-point review. Don't really know what to call it, right? We're not talking about actual topics within the AP Calculus course and exam description. We're talking about review topics that go back to AP Calc AB and discuss all of the integration techniques that you learned there. We're going to take a look at example two where the focus is a problem that actually has two different approaches that you're going to use to integrate and um, ultimately find the antiderivative. So if we take a look at our notes here, we already went through example one and we talked about the vast array of formulas of which there are 20 that we want to get very comfortable with. Two of these uh, ideas we'll probably be using in our example number two here. So I'm going to go ahead and get us going. We have the definite integral from 0 to 1 of x plus 3 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. Now what we're going to have to do is think about some things that don't work initially. For example, if one tried to let u be the entire contents of the square root, it's a very logical assumption. It's a strategy that works quite often, but in this case it's not going to fly. And the reason is because the derivative of this inside stuff is negative 2 times x. That's a monomial, one term, that we're going to have very difficult time trying to match that with a binomial or two terms. So we have to think about this a little bit differently. Maybe some of you are looking at that denominator and just maybe a little spark kind of goes off in your head. Um, it's very likely that you're still kind of on the verge of, of reacquainting yourself with these formulas because it's been a long time for many of you. And if you're taking Calc BC as like a second year Calc course. But that formula number 18, our arc sine form, is very indicative of what we see in this denominator. Well, it turns out that we're going to do that formula and we're going to do a u substitution together. But we just have to, first of all, take this integral and split it up so that those two things are more prevalent. And so the trick to this problem, if you even want to call it a trick, is just to split it apart at the plus sign. It's, I don't want to say that it's a common practice because not too many integrals will require that particular approach, but it's one that you definitely want to file away. Um, if all else fails, if you've tried some things, if you notice some patterns in the numerator, then certainly give this a go. And to be honest, both of these are not considered challenging integrals by themselves. Now, of course, it might be challenging if you're, you know, looking at this, say, at the beginning of a school year after a, a long summer hiatus. But by themselves, say in the thick of AB, these things were very manageable. So what we're going to do with our left integral is we are going to use our u substitution that we discussed. u would be that 4 minus x squared, the derivative of which would equal negative 2x dx. Now what we notice is that this x dx that we have in our du expression matches what we have in our integrand. The only thing that does not match is this negative 2. But we have a process for taking care of him, right, by flipping him upside down, reciprocate him. I call that offsetting with a negative one half to my students. And then what we have is really just the integration of 1 over the square root of u or du over the square root of u. I'll just put my du here after. Now we need to change boundaries. I'm going to go ahead and leave this problem in terms of u. So what we're going to notice in this particular case is that if we were to plug our upper boundary 1 in for x, we would have 4 minus 1 squared, which of course is 3. And if we plug 0 in as a lower boundary, 4 minus 0 squared is going to be 4. So I need to swap those out accordingly. I'm going to go ahead and suggest that we finish this integral. I don't necessarily like to bounce back and forth between two different processes, so we're going to go ahead and take care of that. We might have to think about how do we integrate 1 over the square root of u. Well, maybe if 1 over the square root of u was dreaming, he would be dreaming of being written as u to the negative half. That way we can integrate him much easier. We would then add 1 to the exponent. That would give us u to the positive half. We would then divide by that exponent 
a half, which is the same as multiplying by two. And then we can use our boundaries that we found a moment ago, three and four. Okay, I've got just a little bit of room here. I'm gonna extend the page and we are going to go ahead and do the simplifying. I'm gonna cancel my twos, bring out a negative. And then basically if I plug in three, I'm gonna call this the square root of three minus, and if I plug in four, the square root of four, which is equal to two. And I'm gonna leave that just where it is. That's going to take care of that left integral, a u substitution. Now the right side integral doesn't have nearly as much complexity with it. Because it so closely resembles rule number 18, we are going to dive right into it. All we have to do is identify what a and u are. a is always the square root of this constant. u is always the square root of the x expression, which in this case is x to the first. We talk about taking the principal square roots here. If we take the derivative of this u, we get du is equal to dx. That's great. That means du and dx are interchangeable. Nothing needs to be offset. And then about the only thing that's left to do, you guys, well, simply we just bring that 3 out in front. And then by the time we integrate this arc sine form, we need to take note that arc sine does not have a 1 over a in front. Notice how his two counterparts have the 1 over a as part of the formula. So that's something that you definitely want to file away in your memory. So we start right away with our arc sine. I'll write that in purple. And the arc sine is going to be taken of u over a, or in this case, x over 2. And our boundaries are going to stay the same. We never had to change them because our variable is still in terms of x. Last but not least, we are going to go ahead and plug in our 1 and our 0. So we'd have the minus 3 out in front, arc sine of 1 half, minus arc sine of 0. Pretty much the only thing left to do is evaluate this arc sine of a half. Um, the arc sine of zero is pretty easy. I think you all know that that's zero. So for the arc sine of a half, you're thinking about what angle measure has a sine value of one over two. Well, the only way that can happen is if you have a one over two like this, with this being your angle. And I think that forces that angle to be a 30 degree angle, uh, which is pi over six. So we know that this is going to be minus 3 times pi over 6, of course, minus 0. And then one final step, maybe I'll distribute the, the negative end just to clean this up just a tad. And I can certainly multiply or divide my 3 over 6 and get minus pi over 2. And that's pretty much as clean as we can get this. Now I'm going to switch over to the TI Inspire. We're going to check this answer. So here we are with the software. I'm going to go ahead and add a calculator page and I'm going to set up this definite integral, shift plus, I believe. And we know that the boundaries were from zero to one. Let's put that one in the right spot here. And then we are going to take this and uh, we're going to say control uh, divide so I can get a fraction. Now, one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to look back at the problem here for just a moment. And as I was setting up the calculator, I kind of noticed something. I, I thought, wait a minute, did, did I have the correct sign in here? And so you can see from the very, very beginning of this problem, and it's very likely that you may have noticed this and thought, wait, 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 wait I'm confused, I'm confused. There's no reason why I should have put a minus there because we were splitting this apart at this sign right here. That is a plus. So we're gonna switch that, which basically just changes these signs. It's not that much of a change, but it's certainly enough of one that's going to make the problem incorrect. Now, the reason why I wanted to bring that error out, it's almost like I made it on purpose, is because if you go to the calculator, you're always going to have a chance to troubleshoot for errors. So let's return to the calculator and see what we have. So I had placed my definite integral down. Now I'm going to put in my numerator. The numerator is x plus 3 and we're going to have the denominator of the square root of 4 minus x squared. And let's make sure that we get that squared. That'd be nice with respect to x. Now, if I hit enter, I'm going to get an answer that's kind of covering up my picture. So I'm going to move my picture down. And you notice that we have the pi over 2 that's positive, the square root of 3 that's negative, and the plus 2. Obviously, 
we got these uh, values in a slightly different order, but this is the way that you can always check your answers to make sure that you didn't make a mistake. Sometimes your answer on the calculator might differ a little bit, but still be correct. We're gonna talk about how to address that in later videos. For those of you who are watching that don't have an, a TI Inspire CAS calculator, there are several other online programs that you can use to check answers. Uh, Desmos being just one of those. Anyway, I hope this video helped you out and we'll see you next time.